So we've been around for a few years now, and I think we've built, uh, or, or for sure, we've built an absolutely amazing team. Our technology path is extremely exciting, innovative, and, and it's designed to solve some of the biggest problems in blockchain. But we have to know at a granular level that, you know, on, on the margin, are we pushing in the right direction? Uh, I am absolutely convinced we are. But uh, going to the, the direction that we're in, this was a, li- a little bit of an ex post analysis of our strategy thus far. And I've, I've decomposed this into two options. So st- strategically speaking, we had a hard road or an easy road that we could have chosen. And, and this was, say, two years ago, we made a, a decision to go down the hard road. So I'll tell you first what the easy path would have been. So the easy path for us would have been choosing something like the 10 most interesting projects and just mimicking everything they did, everything that's interesting that they do. So watch Bitcoin, watch Litecoin, watch Dash, watch Zcash, watch any other project that is is related to us and just take what they're doing and integrate it, test it and publish it. This would have led down a path of rapid continuous stream of deliveries, high developer activity for anyone paying attention. And that, that activity probably would have drawn in other developers, right? If you have high developer activity, then developers are attracted to that. We could have probably also boosted the prices then by doing this, by people looking at this continuous stream of activity, they probably would have had a beneficial impact to our price. And we could have, you know, reinvested some of these gains into further R&D, right? That would have been the easy path. And I'm not, I'm not saying right or wrong at this point, I'm just identifying what the paths are. The harder road, the road that we, we ultimately chose to go down was develop our own innovation to some of the biggest problems in blockchain. And the two problems that we were tackling were scalability and application privacy. Both are really big deals because I'm not convinced that, that uh, the blockchains that existed before us were really that scalable, in particular for real economic functions going at scale to, to blockchain. And, and I think that application uh, privacy is is a really big deal in a world where we're continuously losing our privacy, right? And, and the industry is focused, I think, quite well on, um, you know, value privacy or privacy for coins and privacy for, you know, transferring value between different parties. But a huge elephant in the room that hasn't been tackled very well was on the data privacy side. And this is an enormous element of, you know, personal personal liberty, freedom, of actually you know, providing the tools for people to to not just you know take an ideological stance on privacy, but to actually provide a useful, productive mechanism for people to make money on delivering privacy to a marketplace, and that's what's what's ultimately sustainable. So, w- what did the hard path you know, include here for us was well, we we chose by working on interesting problems that helped us hire an absolutely fantastic team. So, uh, and, and this goes beyond just the engineers that we attract. We we have I. I, I think will become very evident very quick, very soon when we deliver beta, one of the best engineering teams in the industry, but not just one of the best engineering teams in the industry. We've also attracted absolutely phenomenal human beings across all of our divisions from marketing, BD, infrastructure, growth, you name it, uh, it and uh, an incredible team and incredible people are drawn to very innovative or drawn to innovation, period. Um, so if we had chosen the the easier path, right, we would have drawn potentially a different type of people into the project. Again, not saying good or bad, they all have value. We've certainly suffered, I think, in the marketplace because of it, because the reality is we've chosen to make a long-term investment on long-term success. Now, the good news is we're approaching that long-term right now, right? In the very near future, we are delivering the culmination of a two-year investment in significant innovation, and significant innovation that solves real problems in the marketplace. Uh, now, the hard road doesn't, uh, I'm, I'm not saying here we're, we're delivering a gold-plated product to market. What we're doing is we're delivering a minimum viable product, but it's a working product, right? So we're very sensitive to the idea of we know that we have to deliver to the market. We can't just keep you know, saying we're going to deliver the best possible thing. And we're going to keep delaying that. We're not. We're, we're working on exactly what needs to be done to have a functional product. And we'll be maturing that once it's published, right? So we're going to publish and then we're going to have uh, a continuous stream of improvements to it. So we're doing exactly that. We're also shuffling resources to make sure that we're, we have optimal, you know, uh, whenever we have slack in one area, if we have success in one area or one area is ahead of schedule, we, we shuffle that over to make sure that we're catching up in other areas, right? And what we're delivering is massive. So Alberto gave you a little bit of a sense there, but we're talking about an order of magnitude of about 100,000 lines of new code. A code base built from scratch, and this is very rare in the industry. So, 
Um, our technology strategy and the reason why I, I think ex post analysis, I, I, I still believe we're on the right path, uh, is because it opens up a huge, uh, it, it transitions us from being a cryptocurrency to a platform with an unbounded set of real applications that can be built on it that go beyond coin transfer or simple data pub- publishing to a blockchain network as they exist today. Massive scalability and applications with the architecture that was chosen with the Zendu implementation. And the promise of smart contracts on a a core proof of work UTXO based system. This bridges what I think is currently uh, in high demand right now is bridging that public to private blockchain uh, gap that exists where there are a lot of businesses choosing to build on private blockchains, which I don't think makes sense. The implementation that we're delivering to the marketplace is is extremely innovative and it, it covers that gap. It gives businesses a reason to build on a public network that I think didn't quite exist before. But I would say importantly here, and this is the big insight from, say, an economics perspective, is by modularizing the system architecture, what we do for future innovation is we, is we open up a much larger set of future innovations because you don't have to convince this core team of anything to innovate on our, on our future sidechain system. You can innovate on your own sidechain and, and not seek permission from anyone not convince us to do any modifications to the main chain and not have to go through a more complex governance process uh, to do that innovation. So the scope of things that we can do with, with this architecture is absolutely enormous compared to, you know, the option of had we gone down the easy path. So, you know, in summary, we're, we're at the last mile of this marathon here and we're not going to change course. This was just to say, you know, to, to really outline the two largely different paths we could have been on. Maybe there was some hybrid strategy that could have been involved there, but I, I'm extremely excited with the path we've gone down, and we're nearing the, the end here of a very large investment that is going to really blow open the doors for innovation and possibility for real-world usage, in, in particular how it maps back to our, our overarching KPI. <laughs>